Food and humanitarian aid are still arriving in Yemen's ports, but endemic unemployment, high food prices and blockades have made that food virtually impossible to access for millions of Yemenis. More than 8 million people are at risk of starvation and turning the country into the world's worst humanitarian crisis. We take a closer look at the lack of adequate food sources and subsequent famine in Yemen, but we must warn you that some of the images you're about to see may be disturbing. Despite the conflict, food and humanitarian aid are still arriving here at Yemen's ports. But endemic unemployment, high prices, as well as blockades, has made that food almost impossible to access for millions of Yemenis, putting more than 8 million people on the brink of starvation and turning this country into the world's worst humanitarian disaster. We take a look at the lack of adequate food sources and the subsequent famine here in Yemen. But we must warn you that some of the images you are about to see may be disturbing. This ward at Aden's Al Sadaka Hospital treats severe, acute, and chronic malnutrition. Dr. Ida Al Sadiq works here and with the World Health Organization to establish the internationally recognized indicators for different degrees of malnutrition. She is currently pushing to expand those categories to reflect the unhistorical severity of cases that she is seeing. What we have uh, recently is that the cases are very, very severely malnourished, and if we have a col another column of less than five, six, seven, these are the cases uh, we, which we found recently. Every room is filled with multiple patients. Look how severe she is. 16-month-old mm -hmm. Tazmin and her mother are internally displaced people from the city of Taiz, which experienced some of the worst fighting. She came with a severe acute malnutrition, poor nutrition rehabilitation, and complicated with acute watery diarrhea. That's why the IV fluid is here. One-year-old Abdus Saeed Salam is also suffering from severe acute malnutrition and is also from Taz, where local clinics are overwhelmed. They have centers there in al in Taz, in working centers there, and, and we're still receiving the guests from there. Abdus Saeed's mother spent about 200 U.S. dollars, all their savings, to get him to Aden for treatment. They have been living in an IDP camp where they get oil, sugar, milk and rice, but Abdus Saeed is still losing weight rapidly. Because of the war, I came from Taiz. I was afraid of the airstrikes, so I left everything behind. I asked for the doctor's help because he had diarrhea, vomiting and fever, and it was discovered he had acute malnutrition. In the last two, three months, he started to lose weight. Mohammed Abdu is four months old and from Hudaida. He may have survived constant airstrikes on his village, but now he is fighting starvation. This hospital reflects the very dire conditions across the country. Most of Yemen's trade and food aid was coming through the country's western port city of Hudaida until the Saudi coalition began restricting imports and bombing the area. The current offensive on Hudaida by the Saudi-led coalition is placing more and more pressure on the Iranian-aligned Houthi movement who currently control it. Allegations have been made that the rebels are smuggling weapons through the port city, but if that trade route is cut off to them, so too will be all the aid and food to the millions of civilians in the Houthi-controlled areas. Roughly 18 million of Yemen's 27 million people require full food assistance, while over 8 million are at risk of starvation. The affordability and access to food across Yemen are at their lowest levels ever, according to the World Food Program. And the country now is facing severe food shortage in terms of uh, local production and at the same time is imported goods, given the fact that the main port in Hudaida has been closed over the last one, almost one and a half year. This is attributed also the soaring market prices, which is really going up. This has pushed Yemen to the brink of famine, as the need for food and other humanitarian aid across the country increases steadily. Aid agencies accuse both warring sides of using food and aid as a weapon, and that restricting access to them could kill more people than all the guns, bombs and airstrikes put together. Natalie Carney for CGTN in Aden, Yemen. And to discuss this further, we are joined by CGTN's Abdulaziz Bilu in Mogadishu.
Abdul, the humanitarian situation in Yemen is really dire. We have heard of reports of cholera and a massive food shortage is being reported in the Arab nation. Tell us more about that situation. Well, Penina, that report by Natalie Kani uh, explains in details uh, how the humanitarian situation is unfolding in uh, that Arab nation. Now, to be precise, is more than half of that country's population, uh, 18 million people, are in need of humanitarian aid eight of which are on the brink of starvation if the situation that is unfolding there in Yemen is not addressed at, at the moment. So one of the major challenge is the fact that uh, most parts of that country uh, is controlled by a, a rebel group known as uh, Houthi. They are a militia group that are trying to wrestle f to take uh, the whole uh, country under its uh, control. And uh, they are fi being fought hard by Yemeni forces who are being backed by a coalition of Arab countries that are being led by Saudi Arabia and the United United Arab Emirates. So aid agencies are quite reluctant to provide aid in some of the uh, areas controlled by Houthi rebels in fear that they might get, uh, attack, get attacked rather by these uh, aerial strikes that are quite constant in uh, that uh, impoverished uh, Arab nation that is uh, next to Somalia here. So uh, the, 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 the situation on the ground there remains unpredictable because of uh, the constant uh, shelling that has been reported there and also the cholera outbreak. The fact that uh, the, the, the authorities there have been unable to control that outbreak itself uh, is, uh, explains the situation on the ground because uh, the food supplies that were coming through the second biggest port in that country, that is Hudaydah, is now under blockade by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. They are trying to cut the flow of uh, aid that is coming from uh, that uh, port because it's headed towards the militant, uh, the, the rebels controlled area. So they're trying to cut uh, that. The conflict there has entered its fourth year with no sign of uh, coming to an end because of uh, the Arab influence uh, in uh, that Arab nation, Penina. Well, you mentioned the Houthi rebellion, Abdul. Of course, that conflict continues uh, to rage there in Yemen. But this hasn't ended illegal migration from the Horn of Africa. Why are authorities not able to address this issue? Because it's putting an extra burden on Yemeni authorities. Well, Perina, that's a very, very good question because, uh, as you're speaking, uh, right now in uh, Yemen, uh, despite the humanitarian situation being uh, d devastating uh, there and uh, despite the conflict that is, is raging between the Houthi rebels and uh, uh, UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia-backed uh, uh, alliance there, still we are finding incidents of uh, uh, illegal migrants, uh, mostly Ethiopians, uh, Somalis and Eritreans uh, traveling to uh, Yemen. Now, uh, Yemen is not their final destination. Most of uh, these uh, refugees who are traveling to Yemen are hoping to go to Saudi Arabia to work as uh, casual uh, laborers because of their high unemployment rate that is being recorded in most countries here in uh, the Horn of Africa region. Now, recently there was a disaster on uh, that uh, region because there's a boat that left uh, the port of Bosaso, northeast of Somalia, headed towards Yemen and it capsized due to strong winds. Almost 46 people lost their lives with 16 of them remaining unaccounted for at uh, the moment. So it's still a big challenge for authorities here in the Horn of African uh, uh, region and uh, when it comes to illegal migration, despite the efforts by authorities here, they've been unable to mitigate that uh, crisis because uh, the, uh, the smuggling business, that of illegal migration, has become a profitable uh, business for uh, illegal smugglers who bring uh, in uh, immigrants from uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and they bring them to Somalia through the port of uh, Bosas, and they try to bring them to Saudi Arabia. And most of these refugees hope to benefit from UNHCR relocation program. They think that once they go to Yemen, and because of the situation in Yemen, then they might be relocated uh, to some uh, Western countries. So that's where things stand at the moment, Benina. All right. Abdul, thank you very much for joining us. Abdul Aziz, live for us there in Mogadishu.